kind of sad and pathetic. Kind of sad and pathetic how many times I've had to try and get in here today. Had some problems with uh, getting into YouTube. I'm not really sure why, why it's being problematic today. Maybe it's my connection, maybe not. I'll talk about a lot of stuff today. And at the end, we're going to talk about some of the happenings that have been happening around here. But I wanted to start with this, 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 this. I had no idea about this. And I just found yesterday, it just finally clicked in my brain. As you know, I've had some kind of issues going on with my stomach and all kinds of stuff. And just minor things that were driving me nuts. If you have like five or six minor things happening on top of a more major thing, it really messed with your mind. It certainly did with me. I was starting to get all whiny and crazy. So yesterday, I told my husband, I said, well, you're going back to the States in a while. Bring me a bottle of Pepsi at AC. Then I started thinking about it. I was like, hey, realification. Um, I started thinking about it. I thought, oh, my goodness. You know, <clears throat> while I have run into the pharmacy here and yelled, give me Benadryl. A number of times now, I haven't tried any other over-the-counter drugs. I, I mean, if it's not in a box where I can see it, I don't grab it usually. Well, yesterday I thought, well, I really need Pepsi. I really need Pepsi badly. And I really need Xanax. Not Xanax. What am I saying? There's too many of these drugs that start with X or Z. And when your mind is addled, that's too many. As you can hear, I'm still a little congested. Zyrtec. I don't take Zyrtec every single day. I did in the States. Here, it's it's like I go to the Dollar Tree and buy their giant boxes of Zyrtec. Knock off Zyrtec. I feel extra nice today. I feel so much better. So I walked in yesterday. First, I looked up the drug names for both of those. Not uh, Zyrtec, but the actual name name. Which would be he 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 dichlorohydro chlorohydro. That's what it is in Spanish. So anyway, I looked up what it was in Spanish, and I looked up what um, Zantac and and um, Pepsi AC were, and I wrote them down. And I walked into the pharmacy and said, "Hey, do you have these things?" Do you have these things? It would be awesome if you did. And I think you probably don't because they're over the counter in the States. And I don't see you having them here. Guess what? They had them. 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 And they were reasonable. Why it took four years for that to dawn on me here, I don't know. So on top of being able to walk into the pharmacy and get whatever you want or what you need. Should I say what you need? Not what you want. As long as it's not anything that you can get high with, walking in and just saying, hey, I need a box of this, a box of that, is awesome. When I first got here, I was extremely pissed off that the only way you could get drugs here in these blister packs. Now I'm all about it. Why? Because I have the tendency to forget what I've taken. If I've taken my dose, if I know how many I have left in a blister pack, it's a lot easier than p pills in a bottle where you have to stop and count them. So it works out better for me. So that's the wonderfulness of, of Costa Rican pharmacies. Now, there are certain things they don't have. They don't carry EpiPens. They don't kept, carry EpiPens in any way, shape, or form. They said they're not needed here. They've never experienced a wave of people with severe allergies. So I buy those in the States and bring them back. Um, they don't have Zopinex. That's one of the uh, nebulizer treatments that I take. Well, I used to take. But they do have, they do have the same drug, but it's moved around a little bit, so you get the shakes with it instead. But that's okay. What they do have is, is yeah, the luxury of walking in and getting a single items like decongestants and high blood pressure meds. Amazing. Yep. And deciding if you don't like your blood pressure meds and you talk to your doctors as well, you could try X, Y, and Z. And walking in and getting two or three pills of X. Of Y and Z and trying them all 
to determine which one is going to work for you. That is something that I've really appreciated here. You can't do that in the States. I want you to buy the entire prescription. And that's all well and good, right up until the entire prescription costs a ton of money, even with insurance, like some of my nebulizer solutions do. Or um, you know that you're likely not to use all of it. Hey, Maria. Hey, Lisa. Hey, everybody else. Um, so that's the thing. One of the things I like about the pharmacies here, the pharmacies, is you can walk in. If you're having a problem, say, hey, I'm having X, Y, and Z going on. Is there anything I can get for that? And they'll, they'll sell you. They'll sell you something. Uh, I've done that several times now with colds and various things, and it's turned out to be the best thing ever. That used to be the way small town pharmacists were back in the day. Now, you can't do that. There's just too much liability. There's too much people suing for various things. You can't do that at all in the States, which is a shame. That's one thing I'm very critical about the States. The whole entire healthcare industry needs an extreme overhaul. All of it, all of it, all of it. And uh, I don't see how they're going to continue unless. I think that's one of those things that once the healthcare system completely breaks down. And I think that's going to happen. I mean, I thought it was going to happen with COVID, but it obviously it didn't. And here's what's really cool about Pepsid. I'm going to say this. There has been evidence that it can help prevent COVID or lessen the symptoms if you get it. If you go to the Pepsid way, way, website, they deny that. They have a whole page of not denials, but I've seen Evidence where people have run drug trials on this, and it's a possibility. It doesn't work for everybody, but there it is. My Advair, uh, $225 for COPD. I, Lisa, I'm going to have to ask. The next time we go to the pharmacy, I'm going to ask. I do know that a regular abuterol inhaler is under a dollar here. Now, I try not to ever use inhalers because sometimes I will react to the propellant. That's why I got off inhalers and started doing nebulizers only. But it's a lot easier to carry the inhaler in your purse than it is to carry a portable nebulizer and nebulizer solution. So I've gone back to those. And the ones I have here don't have the same kind of propellant as in the States. It's something that is more... Um, Allergy friendly, so I haven't reacted. Oh, uh, Angela, it's nasty and overcast here. We're going to get rain all day. So I'm just going to, my husband's leaving for the state, so I have to help him pack up. I got laundry to do. And my cat is destroying my closet. She's destroying my closet where I keep most of my clothing. So I'm going to have to get after her. That little girl gets into every single thing there is to get into and messes with it. And uh, I got to tell you guys a little bit about what happened yesterday before I dive into my main topic, which is going to be patriarchy. You will notice sometimes that I will actually put up a very innocuous picture, put up an innocuous title, and then talk about something entirely different. I've had to do that because of um, YouTube and their weird policies that they enforce across the board. Uh, if you talk about something innocuous, like going to the pharmacy, they'll let you monetize. If you talk about something hard and difficult, like patriarchy that does need to be discussed, what will they do? They'll go ahead and put you on limited, 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 which is fine. I'm never going to make a zillion dollars and I'm fine with that. In fact, if I can make a little bit to make you to buy yarn, I'm happy with that. That's plenty, plenty, plenty. So it's not an attempt to become a zillionaire. And that's one of the things that I have to, one of the things that um, a box of, no block box of Kleenex has tried to say about me. She's tried to say that I'm trying to make money. That's not at all true. But I am trying to discuss things that I want to discuss. And if I can make a, a little bit of uh, yarn money, I'm happy with that. Oh, 100 degrees. Oh, uh, in Washington? Lisa, I thought that Washington was always cool. I thought the weather there was supposed to be like the best, except for the rain, except for it rained a little bit more there. But it was supposed to be cooler without being 
like blizzard conditions, like some places I live. My little dog is hiding behind my pillow on the couch. Oh, Angela, it's so funny. Sometimes the animals get so freaked out by their stuff. My cats have never paid any attention to what's going on with, with the weather here. One time I've seen Sticky get kind of worried about the weather. We were having some crazy, some crazy thunder and lightning that was striking very near and it was freaking him out. But most of the time my animals don't pay any attention. I got to say there's one big exception to that. We had a 6.1, 6.0 earthquake in Virginia back, I don't know, some years back. And all my kid, all my cats ran into the street with us when we ran out of the house. We realized it was an earthquake. Ah, oh, a couple of weeks of hundred in the Pacific Northwest. Oh, I'm not sure I'd like that. It's close to that here many times. During rainy season, it's actually cooler. When my pastor's wife told me that rainy season here is when you make soups and chili and stews cold weather foods. I kind of laughed the first year I was here, but now I've been here a while. Yeah, exactly. You get so acclimated to the weather here that when the 70 degree weather rolls in or the 80 degree weather, when it starts raining, you're kind of like going, ah. I just about died in March when I went back to Louisiana and they were having 50 degrees. I just could not handle that. That was just way too cold. I was freaking out. So I want to talk a little bit about patriarchy. Why? Oh, first I had a crazy tale to tell. Last night was a new low in living in Costa Rica here. The electrical grid is not real stable. So I have to tell you, if you're moving here, expect to have to replace your small electrical appliances on a regular. I don't care if you do use surge protectors. They're going to burn out. And I don't mean like computers and the things. I'm talking stuff like toasters. So yesterday I went to cook dinner and it was going to be all leftovers because I had plenty of leftovers. I went to heat up everything in the um, microwave and my microwave was dead, 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 dead. It was get flashing a, a code that I looked up and saw what it was. It's something pretty major. <sighs> so there's that. It's over 10 years old. Um, I guess it's time to replace it. My microwave was flashing a code. My toaster was dead, so I couldn't even make, I couldn't even toast bread to go with it. And so I was just like, oh, great. I'll just heat everything on the stove top. I'll make some toast in the toaster oven. I'll just kind of go from there. So I started doing that, and I grabbed one of the paper plates that we get from Costco here, which I don't particularly like. They're very thin. Loaded my husband's plate. The pasta and meatballs burned right through the plate and landed on the floor. And lo and behold, every cat in this house, including including Little Pork here and Stinky and everybody else was like, zoom, on the meatballs. So here I had this horrible mess in the middle of my kitchen floor, and I had Catapalooza eating meatballs. So I'm cussing horribly. So I had to throw his plate away and start over, grab a real glass plate, fix it up. That was all the leftovers. So after I brought it down, I went, came back to, and cleaned up everything, including letting the cats have all the meatballs, mopped the floor, and proceeded to cook for myself, which wasn't a big deal. I had enough ingredients to make a good salad, and um, I had some really good French bread, really great fresh uh, pesto sauce, and other things that I put together that was just out of this world. So I wasn't upset with not being able to eat the meatballs and spaghetti. So long story short, I'm mopping this up and I look over. Stinky is tearing into my good French bread. So I had to chew him off. I go back and I keep mopping and the other cats are all eating meatballs. I look over and Stinky has gotten into where my eggs are sitting on the countertop and is biting into the wrapper that they're wrapped in because I just bought them and biting into an egg. He somehow broke the shell and was eating the egg. So I had to shoo him off and keep mopping. I think that would be it, huh? No, he got into the bagels. I just bought brand new, fresh gar what, garlic bagels and everything bagels that he was in them. So I had to stop and shoo him off. I still, for the life of me, I laugh because so many crazy things like that happen to us here. You just have to um, laugh it off and go on. 
But the thing with the um, small appliances is, is a real deal. So I would not waste money buying the most expensive toasters and whatever here. I think we're going to start unplugging all the small electrical appliances where we're not using them specifically so we don't have any more burnout. I am in love with my toaster oven and I don't want it to go anywhere. No kittens. No, this is this is this is my little a-hole cat who I've had for four years now who likes good bread. He will eat. He won't touch sliced bread. If you buy like sliced any kind of bread, he won't touch it. But walk into the French bakery and get a huge crusty loaf of sourdough or something like that. Put it down, walk away, turn back, and he has eaten a hole in the wrapper and is eating the bread. I have to put it all away. I do not. I do need Chinette, except that they don't have it here. They don't have it here. That called Lost in the Pond. And I'm just watching him carry on about the wonder of this food or that food. And I am laughing here in the States. He's from Great Britain because I'm like, dude, I won't even touch that until I've drowned it in in Tabasco and added some vegetables and other things to it. And then maybe I'll eat it. Maybe. (laughs) Not always. So I'm very funny about my food. So that's 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 your laugh of the day is me running around last night having a very, very, very bad evening but laughing over later going that was crazy that was crazy when they all went Zoom! for the meatballs <laughs> uh, so um that that's it but i want to go on to the amy it is very hard to cook for only two people i'm actually looking forward to my husband being gone so that i can just cook one chicken breast one potato one this one that in fact, I'm going to go on the um, specific diet for asthma and for allergies where you cut it down to just a handful of things that you know you're not allergic to. I'm going to do that while he's gone for his safety more than anything else because I get cranky. I get crankier than uh, anything you've ever seen when I have to eat that way because I'm grumbling going, I don't want to eat any more rice. I don't want to eat any more of this. This is bland. Oh, my God. I, I, I tend to get really cranky. And I'm eyeing my hot peppers and going, I want that. I want that so bad. The idea being that you do this for a week or two, and if you're having various reactions, it calms them down. And I need that because I'm on an H1, I'm H2, and a proton pump inhibitor right now. And I'm still reacting all over the place. It's time to do the diet thing. Cindy Kunzman and I have talked about this quite a bit. She also has all kinds of problems. We've talked about the low allergen diet, which is just no fun at all. And it's what has to happen now. Um, Here's the thing about a lot of things with this. People, sometimes when I was writing for NLQ, and even now I get criticism for saying I loaded my husband's plate for him. And we have this long discussion sometimes about patriarchy. I'm a big opponent for toxic patriarchy, and we see it all the time. In fact, I was thinking about this yesterday when I was thinking about the situation with the preacher boys And whoever it is that is contacting them, which might be without a box of Kleenex, they are swearing it is without a box of Kleenex is contacting them and it's guilty of all of this. I'm not entirely convinced only because of the madness that went on during her case where all of us, not all of us, but many of us were contacted via email and private messenger and various things and threatened with various things, sent various crazy things, the whole nine yards. So I'm not entirely convinced that it's her. It may well be, it may be a hacker. She's turned on Swanson. It would make Swan, it would make sense that Swanson, after she tossed him under the bus, may have taken actions. He may well have. He may be connected to this. Maybe it's just hackers that aren't connected to him at all. I don't know. But it does seem curiously weird. I started thinking about this last night in terms of patriarchy because, now don't get me wrong, I like the Preacher Boys. I've been watching them for quite some time. Only recently did I join the Facebook page and start talking a little bit. 
but I've watched their videos for quite some time. They are former IFB, Independent Fundamentalist Baptist, which is an extremely patriarchal society. So I'm looking at them going after KJ, and I'm wondering, does patriarchy play a role in this? Would they react the same if it was a man going after them? I don't know. I just like to look at people's motives and try to figure out what the heck's going on. You, you know, I like um, I like real for the most part, real entertainment news. But he does have his moments when he crosses a line. And he sometimes will make very patriarchal statements. And I'm just going, oh, my God, I can't believe you said that. Please don't say that about a woman having a woman be in her place and having um, them serving their husbands. That's just not a thing. Now, I do serve my husband, and I've gotten quite a bit of pushback for that. But you know something? He's 69. I'm 61. This is just something we've done for years. It has not a darn thing to do with the patriarchy. My husband is was raised by his mama to not do any of this stuff for himself. So he really struggles to do these things. They're not part of who he is. Now, he's learned how to cook a little bit, and that's good. And then there's the part of me that loves him so much. I want him to have a good time. I want him to, I want to serve him. Like I serve my, I've served my children. It just is what it is. And he knows that if he's really, I know if he's really sick, I'm sorry. That's one of my side effects from the, the Lyrica. I drool. I don't drool. I get excessive. When I talk, I get excessive <laughs> saliva. So if you see me doing like this, that's exactly what's going on. I'm dealing with that crap. So long story short, I love him so much. I want to. I want him to be blessed. So I serve him regardless. And it doesn't have a lot to do with patriarchy. I mostly flip the bird at patriarchy. He knows that if I'm sick, he knows how to cook basic things and, and do this for himself. He's going on this trip. I'm not packing his bags. I never do that. There are a lot of things that he goes ahead and does because he's an adult male that I expect him to do that when I was part of Quiverful, nobody did. Nobody's husband did. The wives did from packing to you name it. I do the things that I'm talented at that he's not talented at. He does the things that he is talented at that I am not talented at. And that's really how it should be, I think. But anyway, back to patriarchy. So I started wondering if the reaction to KJ had something to do with patriarchy. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to talk to Eric maybe and see, hey, what's your attitude on this? Um, because I am curious. I'm curious if they've carried some kind of patriarchal BS out of the IFB. The IFB and the new IFB preaches it hard. Submission of women, the things they say about women, the things they teach, they um, reduce women to a set of chores and body parts. It's a dehuman the dehumanizing process that turns a woman from a few, you know, an actual human being that is equal to a man to functions, to a walking, talking, cooking sex robot. And I don't know about you, but I'm way more than that. And you're right. Most people that cook serve. And I like to cook. That's always been something I'm good at. When I was in college, that was one of the things I did for a while. I, I cooked at a restaurant. And I really enjoyed that. That was very fulfilling to me, even if it was get up and make salad and a dessert for 500 people. I mean, I was good with that. I liked it. But... <sighs> I, that's one thing leaving NLQ I've done is I, I see patriarchy everywhere now. When I came to Costa Rica, that was one of the hard things. That was one of those cultural things that I struggled with. This is a very patriarchal society. Very patriarchal. You see this everywhere you go. You see how people act. When I first got here, I was doing like I did in the States. My husband would introduce me to some friend of his. I'd rush out with my hand down and say, hey, how you doing? Trying to shake hands. And men would shrink away like, you don't do that. You just do not. You don't do that. You don't um, introduce yourself. You don't in that way. You don't try to shake hands. It's more of a nod the head sort of thing. 
And you just see it in the day to day here. You see it all the time and how people will push past women, how um, in the advertising women are treated as if they're second class citizens. You see it in the stores when people get waited on. It's just everywhere here. And that's been, a, for me, a really difficult thing to deal with because I just wanted to jump in there and say, oh, no, wait on her. You wait on her now. She's been waiting. I've really struggled with this. And living here for that, that's that's the bad thing. But you can't change an entire culture. You remember when I've talked about the... Um, Tico culture, where they don't show up on time. Tico time's a real thing. When you know something is a culture, you can't change it. You just either accept that this is their culture and you move past it or you flip out and you end up leaving. Most of the people I know who've left, it's been around the two-year mark. It's been because they assumed if they came to Costa Rica, it would be just like when they visited and stayed in a resort. They didn't realize the reality of the everyday things you have to do here, going and buying groceries, going, you might have to go 50 times to the, the, in, to the company that does, um, the company that, that provides your insurance, your, your electricity. I don't know why I kept saying insurance, your electricity to get things done. You just have to, you had to be persistent. I've learned about that since I've been here. Persistent. I mean, most of the time when I've had to even deal with, the cable company, particularly since I've been trying to get better internet connection because I don't have it here. And that has been one long frustrating thing. And I finally found somebody else that provides high speed with fiber optics and they are full. They can only take so many clients in my area and they are full right now. And I am on a waiting list to get high speed internet connected to fiber optics and step this, instead of this ancient copper wire that that uh, Issei uses, that they refuse to replace, even though it gives us terribly, terribly bad internet. So it's been about 24 hours since I saw the preacher boys thing with without a box of Kleenex. And I keep going back and forth. I don't know if I, sometimes I'll look at it and say, that sounds so much like her. This is clearly her. She's she she has impulsivity issues. She went into Reddit the other day and posted on the Reddit the W A W O A C B Reddit, the anti Reddit, the Watchers, and she posted there and immediately got banned and blocked and it got taken down. Live to serve everyone. Lisa, I did the same thing. Comes to my house, including my husband. It's not about roles, just love. <sighs> exactly. Exactly, Lisa. And um, I tell my husband, you know, things like that, they go too far sometimes when in attempting to fix these things. And that's not the kind of things in patriarchy that's harmful. What's harmful in patriarchy is when they tell you, you can't have this treatment because you're a woman. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't have a bank account. Those are the harmful aspects of patriarchy that must be combated. Not this serving your husband dinner because you love him. That's really not it at all. I shudder to think what I would have to do, consider he does car care. He mows the lawn here. I used to mow the lawn sometimes where we lived. It was usually myself or my son. And then later he did it after we retired. I don't mind mowing the lawn and I've always been pretty good at gardening. But I'm not really capable right now. I can maintain my uh, contraband garden with all the seeds I'm not supposed to have here pretty well. I can keep it weeded. I can string up the plants. But mowing would be a little bit of a challenge. So... Um, Not understanding the situation at all. Are you talking about, Amy, are you talking about the situation with the preacher boys? I can pull up and read to you what she said. She, uh, whoever said that was claiming to be KJ. Um, whoever did it never said she was KJ. They just said, I'm the one you've been talking about. They said, 
do it my way or I will release my 175 followers on you and make your life hell. So that's basically what happened. Whoever did it is trying to get the preacher boys to talk about the essay of someone named Diane that this person was pretending to be at first. And then when the preacher boys, Eric said, this doesn't sound, you know, there's something about this that sounds off. Who are you really? And that's when the conversation said, I'm the one that you've been talking trash about or something like that. And, um, Ah, uh, yeah, I am experiencing Latin culture and it has its it has its advantages. It also has its drawbacks and mostly the patriarchy one is a really hard one for me to swallow. I really want to jump in the middle. Um, but the whole thing with KJ, she said, I'm the one you've been talking about that you treated unfairly. And he said, you know, Katie Joy Paulson. And the person went on to say, yes, that that's who they were and um, said that he should publish this account of Diane's essay. And that if he did and he backed off on her, I should actually just pull them up and read them because the conversations are interesting. And I did save them. I just have to grab them real quick. I saved them all the other day because... I have been taking notes on all the crazy behavior and every single day I take notes about everything. Well, a lot of things that have gone on because it's just unbelievably weird. Okay. I'm going to read them aloud. If I can read them. It's from Diane. It says, hi, Katie Paulson told me to reach out to you in regards to my story. Okay. The preacher boy said, Hi, Diane. Can you give me some more inf info? Diane says, I was sexually abused by a cult member. Shared a picture and says, this is the person that abused me. And there are pictures of her. Katie wants you to do a story on her, her names. She was abused between ages five and 16 if you do this for me, I will stop the hate that you're receiving. She deserves to be humiliated for reporting my family to CPS. Her Twitter is blank and her Instagram is blank. Do this for me and I'll stop my followers from targeting you. I might be misunderstanding something that's what he said why are you trying to read this letting me telling me i'm sorry not letting me you'll stop the hate i'm receiving and stop your followers from targeting me Okay, that was the first set of two. There's a there's a total of six here. So I've just read the two. I think it might be. I, the, some of the language is, and I know she has real impulsivity issues where she does things like this occasionally. Yeah, it doesn't read right. So there is no telling. So number two, she said, you know full well who I am. He said, no, I really don't. And unless I'm very mistaken, it sounds like you're blackmailing me to do what you want or else you're going to send a Twitter mob my way. She said, the person you humiliated with your post without consulting me first. He said, ah, Katie, she said, if you do this for me, I will stop others from harassing you, have a much bigger audience than you. He said, creating a separate account entirely for the sole purpose of blackmailing me into bending to your will. That's not how I operate, Katie. That's not just how he 
operate, doesn't operate. That's how a lot of us don't operate. Let's go on here real quick. She says, he said first, I have said my piece. She said, this person is a liar and deserves it. Do it this and I will forget our spat. Otherwise, I will personally make your life a living hell. It is your choice. He said, that's not how I work. I don't even know who the person is you're referring to. And I don't want any piece of your self-created drama. <laughs> she said, she lied in my court case. I want her exposed now or I will make sure you regret humiliating me. He said, first, not doing this. Second, how do I even know you're really Katie? She said, you'll find out when you have 170,000 people harassing you. He said, well, if this, if it, if it is really you, it's disgusting you'd exploit a victim. You're unhinged, blocking this account now. And that's exactly what he did. He turned around and blocked that account. Katie hasn't responded. She hasn't mentioned this in any way, shape, or form. Immediately after this was shared yesterday, she locked a bunch of her stuff. She locked all of her Twitter accounts, not just one or two. And she did unlock some things, but she unlocked, she locked up everything for a while. She hasn't mentioned it. And you know her. You know if she's falsely accused of something, she's going to come out with guns blazing. Or if she's accused of anything that's true, even she comes out guns blazing for the person that uh, she has a response. She has a response on Reddit. I'm going to have to go in there and look. I don't know if that's Katie or not, Amy. I Part of me says yes and part of me says no. Believe me, does sound like a KJ phrase. It really does. So who knows at this point? I do know that he is taking this to the authorities. Uh, Salsa has jumped in. So this is getting very, very interesting. For her sake, I hope this is not her. Black male never plays well. Um, part of me wonders if this is, came out of the Clark Swanson camp after she threw him under the bus. I think that's a possibility that they're going to have to examine as well. I haven't seen what she said on Reddit yet. That could be too, Lisa. <laughs> I don't know. Let's look at the Reddit real quick. I'm assuming you're talking about her personal Reddit, right? She doesn't have me blocked there, but I am not there as Suzanne, so she probably does not know who I am there. Uh, so let's take a look and see exactly what it was she said. Because when I went to bed last night, I hadn't seen anything that she responded. Okay, can I look at this without joining? Jeremiah Duggar's rumored girlfriend, Frida's thunder jacket. DJ Goslin. Josie Balka. Janelle Evans. Derek and Jill. Jana Duggar. Explain. I don't even know what that is. Explain. Let me look. Is that where she said it? Oh, that's something to do with, with Jenna Duggar. Thunder shirt again. Jim Bob Mackin on Michelle. Amy Duggar, King. John David and Abby Duggar, Sister Wives. Jenna Duggar, Sister Wives. Amy Duggar, King. Gil Bates. 
baby Darwin, Cody and Janelle Brown, sister wives, Mike Kelty, and Tony Padron of sister wives, Jim Bob and Michelle, Gil Bates, Jen Duggar, Jill and Joanna. Welcome to my community. I don't see it. I am not seeing it. I'm seeing the top official lounge, but I went through that last night and nothing has been added to it. So I, I'm not seeing that at all. Let me look at the other one. Uh, okay. Okay, let's go here. I'm going to look at the other one. Okay, here it is. It's there. How could she deny this? The victim told Preacher Boy that KJ was the only person with that info. As this happens as she's actively trying to discredit and ruin her own niece. And who is this group? She keeps talking about why is Saul's helping KJ? What lawyer discusses a case on Twitter? I have so many questions. Okay, so apparently she did finally say something. Okay, Salt said, I'm sorry you're being included in this. There appears to be a group we have been tracking that insert themselves through hacking and trolling into, well, W-O-A-C-B. I always want to say Woach Roach. Controversies. We have been working with the FBI Los Angeles to investigate their crimes. And there's a bunch of more stuff from Salt's. Uh-uh-uh. And I'm not saying anything. I am not seeing anything from her on this. Wish I was. She did admit yesterday that she has multiple, multiple sock accounts. We all know that. That's not a surprise. We all knew that pretty, pretty far back. Uh... And I'm not seeing anything. I'm not seeing anything on Reddit having to do with this. She does love the attention. This is feeding, this is feeding her supply. And I think really that's going to be the thing we're going to have to do to shut off the supply for her and make her go away is just ignore her. And I know I keep saying that I'm never going to talk about her again. And then, she, then something like this happens. When these things happen, I'm going to talk about them. But I'm not going to make daily, daily videos about her either. Click the arrow for the next screenshot. Okay, let me go back and do that. Because the next screenshot I thought I saw on that was another Michael Saltz one. Maybe I'm wrong. Ah, okay, here we go. She finally did respond. You're right. She said this, yesterday a troll attempted to cause drama between Preacher Boy and myself by creating a fake account and messaging me. The same account messaged me, and I knew there were trolls stalking me, and I blocked them. When I say this has been going on for years and ramped up during the lawsuit, I'm not lying. We've discovered hundreds of fake accounts and received hundreds of fake emails with death threats. Michael Saul's top T. Westbrook's lawyer responded to Preacher Boy to let him know this was not me. He reiterated that I am being attacked by a group through hacking and trolling. This group spams any creator I collaborate with and demand I stop working with them. This is what happened to Preacher Boy and so many others on the YouTubes. Hmm. Okay. Here's where that's BS. Uh, okay. Creators then stopped working with me out of fear and stopped to stop the harassment they received from the group. Some start hate channels and are making hit, hate videos against me, so not to be harassed. Michael Saltz is clear that I'm the victim. I'm the victim. He's also clear that I'm working with him and the FBI. I have the full cooperation of Michael Saltz and the FBI. These accounts are not me, and the messages are not me. Every message I receive is sent directly to the legal team and they send it to the FBI. I'm sharing so people understand that an attorney that many felt was against me who is not, we are on the same team now. It's coming out publicly to state clearly 
that what I've said to be true about the stalking and harassment I receive is true. Follow Michael Saltz's instructions by reporting the harassment to the FBI and by contacting the L.A. office. Okay, I just have this to say about contacting the FBI office. Um, it, it hasn't worked for me because I have done that. I've done that over all the horrible threats that I got. And when somebody signed me up to work as a sex worker, I, I did that with all of that and nothing happened. Nothing happened. And I am of the opinion that nothing will happen, that this is just spinning their wheels. This is useless. The FBI has bigger threats to work with and to follow than some itsy-bitsy blogger who is making statements like this. Maybe it's not her, but I'm sure it's connected to the Salzburg. Uh, not the Salzburg, what am I saying? To the um, Clark Swanson case. Too many S words. Too many S names. It's a shame, though, because I would like to. Uh... Amy, I believe so. I'm like 99.99% .99 sure. Because she came out and gave a statement and said that she'd been given all that information that she posted about the Westbrooks and had taken it for face value. I know from talking to her about the Westbrooks a few times before we had her falling out, she had actually mentioned Swanson to me and that he had given her information, if I recall correctly. Unfortunately, I didn't save all my chats with her. Now I kind of wish I did. I almost did. Such a name dropper, lusting after Tati's wiser attorney. KJ is standing for salts. Yep, that's exactly right. Between this and the niece, it's hard to ignore her ridiculous nonsense and tone deaf awareness. Airing family biz. So ugly. Ha! <laughs> Amy, you said the OTC Percocet. No, not that. You can't get that here. You got to get a prescription. And let me tell you, Costa Rican doctors are very stingy with giving out that stuff. Stingy to the point that every time my husband gets um, uh, one of the muscle relaxers, one of the common ones, for various things, and he takes one or two and says, I don't like the way this feels, I stockpile that. Because those are great when your back goes out. Really great. So I've got it stockpiled and hidden. That's my back meds. For when I get where I, I can't walk because I throw my back out. Um, no, he didn't. Salts didn't say it wasn't her. He said it appears it may not be her. Typical lawyer speech. And speaking of lawyer speech, I watched a little bit of Emily D. Baker's live this morning while I was getting dressed. And I like Emily in some ways. There's but there are issues that I find myself diametrically opposed. I don't know if you guys read about the, um, or heard about the ruling that the Supreme Court made that basically is going to allow colleges and alumni to gift or pay students who are on sports teams. Emily was on a college sport team. I was not. I was anti-sport team when I was in college because I went to LSU. LSU worships the ground these athletes walk upon. That's why they've had good football teams. They've had good basketball teams through the years. They've won some championships and good baseball teams. And I can't even begin to tell you all the ways that um, players were paid, uh, given gifts and various things through the years that I personally witnessed when I was at LSU. Things that shouldn't go down. And the athletes got the finest of everything. And the rest of us were just scratching and squabbling. I remember when they built the vet school, when they were getting ready to build it. And they put they put the guys in the art building at the top. And the uh, art students reacted by doing a series of paintings and drawings on animal genitalia. My ex, not my ex, my late father-in-law Likes to tell tales of walking down that gallery past all those pictures of animal genitalia and how weird that was. That was LSU. 
football was king. Basketball was king. My mother-in-law, my late mother-in-law, my wonderful late mother-in-law, and I had a great relationship with my mother-in-law. I know everybody makes mother-in-law jokes, but I, I don't. I loved her. Um, she has told tales of when she was an instructor at LSU and she was teaching business communication, how hard the sports team directors, the athletic directors, and the deans leaned on her to pass football players, basketball players, whatever, they could barely read just to go ahead and pass them. And she refused to do that, but she was one of the few and she actually got in some pushback, some rather hard pushback with everything. So there's, um, yeah, she thinks Salt is a friend, worshiping him, bringing her nightmare to resolution. Friend, not fiend. I, I'm actually in a fan group of one of the members of Mata Hoople, and his fan group is called Fiends, not not friends. We're all fiends. So for eight fiends, friends, it all works well. But I think that by doing that, the colleges are gonna. It's just gonna set a very dangerous precedent. Now, I agree that something needs to be done about college sports. I think there needs to be preventative medicine for these guys. There needs to be more care, care, care taken with their health after seeing the concussions that these guys are getting as far back as grade school that's impacting their learning abilities and various things. They really need to be all over that. They need to take way more precautions. Then I'm behind. I'm behind doing all that. I'm also behind them setting up some kind of fun where if a player is severely injured and not only can they not attend college, but they've injured themselves to the point where they're never going to be able to work. And that's happened. That there is a fund that pays these guys living expenses and for their health care. They're putting their lives on the line for the college. And the college is doing this because the sports teams are a huge way to bring alumni support and dollars into the college so I understand why they're doing that. I just, I don't think that this is the way to go about it. <laughs> and UT Knoxville, the football players are always getting arrested. Oh my goodness, realification. I didn't know you were in Knoxville. Knoxville is one of my favorite cities that I would stop in when I was driving down to Louisiana from the D.C. area. Just go right on in. Spend the night in Birmingham. Well, north of Birmingham. But yes, um, I um, actually don't have a pets blog right now. 